first impressions of South America and it's honestly so amazing. We're starting off in the heart of Cartagena, Getsemani. This is the most trendy neighborhood and where you can get the best food and the best photos. We're gonna be trying a lot of Colombia's best food. This also used to be the area of Cartagena with the most crime, but now it's turned into a nice, beautiful little neighborhood. You see a lot of street art everywhere. There's people dancing around. There's a lot of restaurants. It's a really great area to be in now. <laughs> The streets are so festive here. There's a few streets that have all the country flags on them. This is Monumento Torre de Reloj, which is the main entrance to the walled city and the likely spot to start any tour since it has a port. So Cartagena was founded in 1533 by the Spanish who came here and it ended up being the most famous city in South America where everyone came to to make some money. Later in the 17th century they decided to build a fortress around the city and it was a main hub for slave trade. Later on the British and Spanish both had a battle for this city and the Spanish ended up winning and they created a massive fortress around the city to make it one of the most protected cities in South America. And after that, it also became one of the first cities in South America to become independent from Spain. Now this 11 kilometer long wall is still the same one that was built back then. And Cartagena is still one of the most preserved walled cities in the entire world. Now we're here at Cartagena's most popular restaurant, which is located on its walls. And it's just an amazing place to watch sunsets. Everyone comes here to get some really great drinks and just look out onto the sunset. Just make sure you check what time sunset actually is because it could be earlier than you think. So this right here is a ceviche and they gave it to us with plantain chips. And this is just a really popular meal here. Honestly, that cafe was one of the best experiences ever. It was just a nice chill evening. You should get here before sunset, like an hour before. When the music is nice, you're just chilling, waiting for sunset, you get your food. And just chilling here at sunset is one of the best vibes ever. It wasn't too expensive either. We paid about 15 USD for the ceviche and the drink total. For dinner, we went to La Santa Guadalupe, which has amazing tacos. Now we're at a place called Mila Pastelaria, which is a really known dessert place here. Gotta shout out my sister here for sure, but this place is a bit of a hit or miss. You have to know what to get to end up getting a good dessert. We ended up walking around the old town a little bit more after that, but then we went home. Next day, we had breakfast at La Brioche, which was a fantastic choice. And after that, we did a tour to Rosario Island, which is gonna be in another video. We got back and now we're at Plaza Trinidad, which is where they have a little night market and they're selling a bunch of food. For dinner, we chose Mar de las Antillas. This place is known for its great Colombian style seafood and we were not disappointed. So far, every restaurant we've been to has been giving us these little plantain chips. It's always there as a side. So a place to do some shopping is at Las Bovedas, but it is more of a gift shop area than a local shop area. You have traditional just gift shop items that you would find anywhere else at gift shops in any other city. Nearby is a massive shopping center called Centro Comercial La Cerezula. It has all the popular stores you would find in big cities around the world with some Colombian stores, but don't expect the prices to be cheaper here. 
We just got some arepas at Don de Magula, which is the best arepas in Cartagena. And we got arepas with chicken, arepas with cheese, and arepas with shrimp. And they were so good. I definitely recommend this place. It's definitely the best arepas in Cartagena. Now we're at arguably the most famous spot in Cartagena and it's also South America's largest colonial fort and that's Castillo San Felipe. The fortress was built all the way back in 1536 and it was built on top of the hill at a strategic location to protect the entire city. The castle itself is a pretty cool sight to see, but I definitely do recommend doing it in a tour because we just kind of walked around aimlessly and didn't really know what was going on. This is a really cool cafe that's also a bookshop and the drinks here don't disappoint. Another popular Colombian meal is a bandeja paisa, and it comes with eggs, beans, a few meats like chicharron, sausages. It also has arepas and avocados. This is a really filling meal, so if you're coming with two people, you should probably just split it. Voy a cantar esta canción. We're walking around Boca Grande now. Personally, I don't really like this area and I think it could be skipped. I definitely prefer Getsemani and the Old Town more. It has more of an authentic feel, Colombian Cartagena, than this area here in Boca Grande, which is just a bunch of built up areas. Whereas the Old Town has a lot of more traditional Colombian food. It has a more authentic feel to it than it does here. If you do plan on coming to Boca Grande, I do recommend visiting this one restaurant. La Casa del Merengue. Restaurante Nami has such great Asian food with a Colombian twist. Try the Latino roll. This is probably the best restaurant in Boca Grande and I definitely recommend going here. The one thing that's really annoying about this city is all those people that hassle you. And while I respect the grind, it's probably a lot more than like cities like Paris, Barcelona, Rome. I definitely think more people hassle you here in Boca Grande than they do in Getsemani or the Old Town. Also, if you're looking for a place to stay, I definitely prefer Getsemani over Boca Grande. I think you'll get a much more local and authentic feel there than you would here. We just went to Boca Grande Beach and other than getting into it when a bunch of people just hassle you, it's actually a pretty good experience. There's a couple of people that still do hassle you, but the beach is actually pretty nice and the waves are really big so you can have fun. The one thing that you need to get here in Colombia is a hot soup. Our favorite one so far has been the lychee flavor, but like we've been drinking it this whole time here. You can't go to Colombia without having hot so. Make sure you're buying lots of fruits when coming here because they're just amazing. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to see more content from Colombia and around the world. And like this video because it really helps me out. I'll see you again in the next one.